Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a crime, drama, mystery film from 1995 titled The Usual Suspects. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Just after midnight in San Pedro, Dean is sitting on the deck of a large boat, unable to move his legs, when he is approached by a mysterious figure who he addresses as Kaiser. They exchange a few words before Kaiser shoots him, sets the boat on fire, and climbs off. Sometime after, Roger is sitting in the witness chair in a California courtroom and begins narrating the events leading up to the catastrophic scene on the boat. Six weeks earlier, police arrested five suspects from across New York City. McManus, Todd, Fred, Dean, and Roger are taken to the NYPD for questioning concerning a stolen truck loaded with guns. The five suspects entertain the police lineup and are drilled throughout the night as they deny involvement with the stolen truck. During Dean's interrogation, it's apparent that the police are especially annoyed with him over a past incident when they mistakenly assumed he was dead. The guys are placed in the same holding cell for the night where they get to talking. It becomes clear that none of them were involved in stealing the loaded truck even though they're all skilled criminals whose reputations precede them. Dean is the only one on the straight and narrow and is dating a high-powered criminal lawyer from uptown, Edie. McManus lets the guys in on details of a job that he and Fred heard about and Todd and Roger seem interested but Dean says he wants nothing to do with it. In present-day San Pedro, the police are lining up body bags on the pier next to the smoldering boat and FBI agent Jack is on the scene. He asks one of the cops if there are any survivors and the cop confirms that there are two, one guy in a coma in county hospital and the DA has the second guy, a cripple. At the San Pedro police station, Special Agent Dave wants to speak with Roger but Sergeant Jeffrey says he can't, adding that Roger is protected from people high up, Roger has total immunity. Dave thinks Roger knows more than he's telling them and wants to interrogate him. He wants to know why 27 men died in the harbor over $91 million worth of dope deal that wasn't even there and, above all, he wants confirmation that Dean is dead. Jeffrey tells Dave that there's no way Dean could have survived. Jack arrives at the hospital, determined to speak with a Hungarian survivor who regained consciousness less than an hour ago. He phones someone to request a translator. The survivor is agitated and yelling out foreign sentences that no one in the room can understand, except for a name that he repeats frantically, Kaiser Soze. Surprised, Jack tells the person on the other end of the phone to find Dave Kuyan from customs. Dave is probing Roger in Jeffrey's office and they disagree about Dean's character. Dave says he was a corrupt cop but Roger points out that was 15 years ago and the cops wouldn't let him go legit. Jeffrey asks if they can get started, so Dave asks Roger to explain what happened after the lineup. Six weeks back, Dean and Edie leave the NYPD. Dean is discouraged and tells her that his potential investors will now find out he was a criminal and everyone in the city will reject him. Edie begs him not to give up, but he is deep in thought when he sees Roger limping across the street and looks into the eyes of the other guys who are all staring back at him. Roger goes to Dean's apartment to convince him to join a hit on a taxi service. He tells Dean that the guys sent him to offer him a cut of the $3 million that they'll score from the emeralds they get away with. He says he's got a way to do the hit without killing anyone but the guys won't let him in unless he gets Dean on board. Dean joins the guys and they pull off a successful hit on New York's finest taxi service, a ring of corrupt NYPD cops that transport smugglers and drug dealers around the city. They get the emeralds, set the police car on fire, and drive away. Dean gives the media an anonymous tip to get back at the police for holding them on trumped-up charges. The press arrives at the crime scene before the police and the story goes mainstream, which results in the two cops who were driving getting indicted and more than 50 dirty cops connected to the illegal taxi service going down with them. Back in present-day Jeffrey's office, Dave isn't buying Roger's story that Dean retired for a woman and that it wasn't his idea to hit the taxi service. He says he's been investigating Dean for three years and that he was indicted seven times before he was kicked off the force, including three counts for murder. Dave lists a string of Dean's other crimes and insinuates that he faked his death after killing a witness who was going to testify against him. Roger insists that Dave has Dean all wrong. Agent Jack is in the survivor's room at the hospital, joined by a translator and a composite sketch artist. The survivor tells them he saw Kaiser Soze, the devil, and describes him to the sketch artist who begins sketching. Back at the office, Dave accuses Roger of lying about witnessing Dean die on the boat to cover for him. Are you stupid enough to think you were friends? Roger says that Dean wasn't behind anything, it was Kobayashi, the lawyer. Dave wants him to give every last detail if Roger wants to convince him that Dean is dead, so Roger continues narrating. After their successful hit, the guys head to Los Angeles to sell the emeralds to McManus's contact who asks them if they're interested in extra work. Dean replies that they're on vacation but McManus asks him more about the job. Redfoot says that there's a jeweler that he wants to rob. He tells them that if they pull it off they can keep the cash and he'll take the merchandise. The guys do the job but things don't go as smoothly as the previous time. During the holdup, the jeweler goes for his gun and fires a stray bullet as Dean attempts to wrestle the gun out of his hand. 
The bodyguards grab Todd and Fred when McManus comes out from behind a car and shoots both the bodyguards. The jeweler is still reluctant to hand over the case so Roger shoots him and Dean grabs the case. The guys are upset when they open the case to find plastic bags filled with powder. McManus is ready to kill his contact when they go to meet him. Dean says that he's going to deal with it his way. When McManus's contact and his men arrive he says that he doesn't know what's in the bags and that he was given the job by a lawyer but he doesn't know who he is. Dean tells him that they want to meet the lawyer and his contact replies that the lawyer wants to meet them too. In the present, Jack arrives at the San Pedro police station and tells Dave that he can stop looking for the dope because there was none. He says the survivor he's been with at LA County is part of the Hungarian mob and he guarantees that the 91 million has nothing to do with a dope deal but he doesn't know what the money was for. Jack fills Dave in on everything he learned from the Hungarian. Two weeks prior, we see the guys standing around a pool table trying to figure out who's behind the jewelry robbery setup when Mr. Kobayashi walks in and introduces himself. He says that his employer requires their services for a very dangerous job that he doesn't expect all of them to survive but those that do will have $91 million between them. Dean asks him who his boss is and Kobayashi replies that it's Kaiser Soze. The guys are shocked when they hear his name, all except Roger who asks who Kaiser is. Kobayashi explains that this is not a request, it's an order. He tells them that all of them have stolen from Kaiser in the past and the only reason they're alive is that they weren't aware who they were stealing from, but they still owe him. Kobayashi blackmails the crew with the murder of the jeweler. He tells them what the job is, Kaiser wants them to stop a dope deal worth $91 million from happening by destroying all the dope on board a boat. Kobayashi gives them a briefcase and leaves. Dean opens the case to find maps of the boat and envelopes for each of them. They open their envelopes and skim over the contents, records of their lives and everyone they know, down to the very last detail. They exchange theories about what could be going on. Dean thinks that Kaiser is a pipe dream, Fred thinks he could be legit, and Todd is worried that Kobayashi is LAPD and that it's a setup. Roger asks them again, who is Kaiser Soze? Back in the present day in Jeffrey's office, Dave is listening intently as Roger tells the legend of Kaiser Soze, that the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. He says that the guys told him plenty of stories but the one that he believes is where Kaiser went home to find a gang there who had violated his wife and terrorized his children. They killed one of his kids in front of him and threatened to keep going if he didn't give them his territory and all his business. Kaiser killed everyone in the room, including his family, but let one gang member live to tell the tale. Once his family is buried, Kaiser goes after the mob and kills their family members and friends, burns down their houses and stores, and then disappears, becoming a myth. Dave tells Roger that if Kaiser Soze is real then he'll be looking for him and Roger agrees. He says that's why there's pressure on the police to let him go, because Kaiser wants to catch him the moment he gets out. Dave changes the subject and asks Roger what happened next. Roger says that Fred left because he couldn't stand the idea of working for Kaiser but they got a call from Kobayashi telling them where they could find Fred. Two weeks prior, the guys find Fred's dead body on the beach and decide to bury him. They realize that they can't run from this and set their minds on killing Kobayashi. The guys are in an office building, dressed in maintenance uniforms, when Kobayashi and two bodyguards get into an elevator. As the doors close, the lights go out and McManus shoots both bodyguards. He tells Kobayashi to push 20. On the 20th floor, Dean tells Kobayashi that their answer is no and that Kaiser is not real. He gives Kobayashi one last chance to call the whole thing off but he declines and says Kaiser doesn't change his mind once it's made up. He tells them that they can't threaten him with anything worse than what Kaiser will do to him if he doesn't carry out his orders. McManus is about to shoot Kobayashi when he mentions that he's there to do business with Edie, who's upstairs. The guys follow Kobayashi to an office where they see Edie through the glass window. Kobayashi points out the escort next to her and tells them that he never leaves her side, implying that they can get to Edie whenever they want. He tells them to get some rest and that he doesn't want to see them again, or the bodyguard will take care of Edie. It's daytime, and crew is sitting in a car surveilling the harbor, trying to devise a feasible plan that doesn't get them all killed. Dean says that if they jack the boat now they get nothing but if they wait for the money there'll be more men, and none of them will come out alive. McManus and Todd agree to wait for the money to arrive so they can get a cut. After sunset, the crew gets into their positions as the mob arrives. Dean turns to Roger and whispers to him that he wants him to stay put. He tells Roger that if the rest of them don't make it, he wants him to take the money, find Edie, and tell her everything because she'll know what to do. Dean leaves Roger behind and walks the pier towards the mob while McManus is on the rooftop watching through a sniper rifle. As he approaches the mob, the men form a circle around him and he asks them if there's a problem. While the mob is distracted, Todd plants a bomb on the boat and walks away. The bomb explodes and chaos erupts as Dean shoots two men and McManus shoots down three more. Some of the gang members escape to the inside of the boat but Todd manages to gun down a few on the deck. Dean and McManus are on the boat, tracking down gang members and shooting them, while Todd runs over to the van and opens the rear doors. He lifts the lid on one of the crates and sees piles of money inside. Just as he begins laughing with joy he gets a massive fatal shot from behind. 
Dean and McManus are clambering through the steel corridors inside the boat while bullets are flying all over the place. The chaos eventually subsides, giving them an opportunity to scope out the boat. They meet up in the cargo hold where McManus asks Dean where Todd is. Dean says he doesn't know and becomes hysterical when he tells McManus that there's no dope on the boat. McManus says he's out and leaves. Roger is hobbling along the boardwalk towards the boat and ducks behind a fence when Dean spots him and gestures for him to come aboard. McManus is walking out of the cabin and Dean asks him what's going on? He responds that it's the strangest thing before dropping to the floor, face down with an axe in his back. Dean kneels next to McManus and is busy getting up when he is shot from behind and drops to the floor. Roger hears the shot and looks up to see a mysterious figure standing on the deck. He limps away as fast as he can, takes cover behind some ropes where he watches as Kaiser shoots Dean twice before setting the boat on fire and getting off. At the station, in the present, Jack tells Dave that they found another victim on the beach. He was shot in the head before being flung from the boat when it exploded. Jack says his name was Arturo, a rat who was about to identify Kaiser, and that Edie was advising on his extradition proceedings. Moments later, Dave goes back to the office and tells Roger that he knows there was no dope on the boat but Roger insists that there was. Dave gets aggressive and yells at Roger, saying that he is lying about seeing someone kill Dean. Roger swears that he's not lying about seeing Dean getting shot. Dave asks him why he didn't try to help him if they were friends and Roger holds up his crippled hand. He tells Dave he was afraid to shoot the devil in the back in case he missed. Dave asks Roger if he ever heard of Azuro, the snitch who was about to identify Kaiser. He tells Roger that's what the deal on the boat is about. The Hungarian mob was there to buy Azuro so they could find Kaiser. Roger says he has never heard of him and Dave responds that Dean must have heard of him from Edie. Roger is bewildered and asks Dave if he is saying that Kaiser sent them to kill someone. Dave replies that he's saying that Dean did it, because Dean is Kaiser. Why would Dean tell you, a cripple, to stay put and run away with the money? Dave says that Roger didn't actually see Dean die, it was all a hoax. Dean used the whole group to kill Azuro. There was no dope. Roger is in shock as the information sinks in. Dave and Jeffrey are drinking coffee in the office after Roger leaves when Dave notices that names and words printed on Jeffrey's bulletin board match up with details in Roger's story. He drops his coffee cup as he realizes that Roger's story was mostly fiction he made from the words on the board and everything around him. Dave runs after him. As Roger is limping down the sidewalk his limp gradually fades and he shakes out his twisted fingers, revealing a normal hand. He gets into a car that stops next to him and looks at the driver. The driver is none other than Mr. Kobayashi. By the time Dave makes it outside, it's too late. Roger was Kaiser all along and, and he pulled the devil's trick, just like that, poof, he is gone. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.